Next, we're going to talk about chemotherapy. There are different classes of chemotherapeutic agents. However, in myeloma, we restrict our use to largely three different classes, the alkylating agents, the anthracyclines, or the vinca alkaloids. Let's start with the alkylating agents. These include drugs like melphalan, also known as alkaran, or cyclophosphamide, also known as cytoxan. Melphalan happens to be the oldest chemotherapeutic agent and very active in myeloma. It works by binding to the genetic material or proteins so they don't work properly. Myeloma cells get unhappy and die. It can be given either by mouth or by injection. When given by injection, it's usually part of a transplant procedure. It may be combined very effectively with lots of other drugs we now use to treat myeloma. I mentioned the steroids, but also the new drugs such as Velcade, Thalidomide, Revlimid, and Arsenic have all now been shown to be effectively combined with melphalan. The major side effect, like other chemotherapeutic agents, is it can affect normal bone marrow function and lower blood counts. It can minimally cause nausea and vomiting, although this is not common unless it's part of a high-dose procedure and given intravenously. There's another alkylating agent also used in myeloma, but not as commonly called cyclophosphamide or cytoxan. It's very similar to melphalan in terms of its mechanism of action. It also can be given orally or by injection. It also may be combined with the other drugs I mentioned with melphalan. The side effects are quite similar to melphalan, but it also, when given at higher doses by IV, can irritate the bladder and even cause bleeding. The next class of drugs we use to treat myeloma are the anthracyclines, drugs such as doxorubicin or doxel. The newer version, doxel, is very similar to doxorubicin, but it's packaged in a fat globule, and in that way hangs around longer, and in lingling, it can be given much easier than can doxorubicin. It's given by injection, both doxel and doxorubicin. Doxorubicin sometimes has to be given over several days in a row, whereas the doxel version that lingers, you can give it quickly and it can remain effective for many days. The mechanism of action of these drugs has not been well worked out. As a single agent, these drugs have little efficacy in myeloma, but when combined with other drugs, they work very well, similarly combined with the drugs that work with melphalan and cytoxin drugs such as steroids, Velcade, and thalidomide. The major side effects of these drugs, similar to other chemotherapeutic agents, are it can lower blood counts. However, additionally, these drugs can also affect heart function, but only after long-term usage, and that rarely occurs in myeloma patients who receive these drugs. The hand-foot syndrome specifically occurs with doxel, or the fat globule containing form of doxorubicin. This involves warm feet and warm hands, which ultimately may be blistering and cause lots of pain. This doesn't occur commonly in myeloma patients, however, because it's related to how long the patients are on the drug. And usually in myeloma, we don't use it for that many months. The vinca alkaloids have been used less commonly today. These are drugs such as vincristine and vinblastine. These days, they've largely been replaced by our newer drug agents that I'm about to discuss. So let's now talk about all of the new drugs that have come in the clinic over the last several years to treat myeloma.